Russia has reacted to the U.S. refusal to launch joint airstrikes against terrorists in Syria. Moscow says it's prepared to strike terrorists unilaterally if they refuse to lay down their arms. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu has said Moscow reserves the right to eliminate terrorist groups starting May the 25th if they do not adhere to the truce in Syria. This after Washington rejected Moscow's proposal to carry out joint airstrikes against militants. Russia has already carried out many airstrikes and terrorists in Syria upon a request by the Syrian government. Joining us to talk about this is political commentator Paul Antonopoulos. Paul, it's good to have you with us on the program. Now, we understand that the Russians had previously stopped their aerial attacks on the terrorists, including those who were uh, usually referred to by the West as rebels, moderate rebels. What do you think in your mind made the Russians consider the option of resuming those attacks, be it jointly with the Americans or now unilaterally? Well, the Russian Air Force has taken a three-month break from targeting many terrorist forces in Syria because of the ceasefire agreement that is in place throughout Syria. We know that militants that have signed to the ceasefire are still allied to terrorist groups that are not part of this peace settlement, uh, like uh, Jabhat al-Nusra. Russia's planned resumption of airstrikes will force all militant groups to seriously adhere to the ceasefire agreement or be eliminated. This therefore means that Russia is forcing the militant groups who have continually violated the ceasefire to conform or to be targeted. Uh, this can force peace to be administered to select terrorist groups. However, in the case of uh, Jabhat al Nusra, the only means peace can be achieved is with their total uh, annihilation. Now, Paul, we, well, on top of this, we understand also that uh, the refusal by the Americans in order to cooperate and coordinate actions in uh, defeating and degrading the terrorists on the ground in Syria, along with the R Russians, which has been all the, uh, all the more importantly uh, encouraged by staff and Demistura, the UN envoy to Syria peace talks as well, uh, does send a major uh, signal and does impact the ongoing peace talks there. What is your appraisal there? Well, the most important thing that we have to consider is that the USA, just like Turkey, are a part of NATO. So there needs to be more coordination between the United States and, and Turkey, along with Russia, to, to uh, deal with this terrorist problem. Uh, the most important part that we need to remember about America's ally in Turkey is that they allow aid and military equipment and jihadist forces to freely cross the border into Syria, which only uh, hinders the Syrian government's efforts in fighting uh, terrorist forces, as Turkey just keeps strengthening the anti-government forces. We know that Turkey is willing to pay any price to remove uh, President Assad from power, and this is exactly in line uh, with the United States policy. And Paul, very briefly, do you think any kind of peace can be achieved in Syria, regardless of the uh, Syrian government's component, which is the essential and main one indeed, but so far as the two brokers of the peace talks are concerned, being America and Russia, do you think any, any uh, ac actual peace on the ground can be achieved without proper coordination and cooperation between the two, that is America and Russia? Uh, of course not. If we've got the Russian side supporting the government and their allies in the United States supporting anti-government uh, forces, no peace can be achieved. Um, although there we can create ceasefires with certain terrorist groups, as long as the United States is supporting other groups, uh, no peace can be achieved unless there's this continued or uh, attempted coordination. Okay, Paul, thank you for your thoughts there.